Hello everyone, I'm Tom Causey and I'm a magician and I'm so glad to be part of the Summer Reading Steam Club with you guys this summer. Now today I'm not going to be Tom Causey the magician. I'm going to be a character from one of my favorite books that you may want to even read this summer. Can anybody guess who I am? If you said Sherlock Holmes, you're right. So we're going to be talking about Sherlock Holmes, the world famous detective today. And actually you're going to get to play along and help us solve a Sherlock Holmes mystery. Now the library probably has some Sherlock Holmes books or they have Encyclopedia Brown books or other mystery books that are fun to check out and read. And I want to share with you one of my favorites and this is a very top secret Sherlock Holmes book that has stories in it that you might not see in the other books. Like for example, this is the case of Sherlock Holmes and Too Much Dessert. Oh that sounds pretty good, I like Too Much Dessert. And this one was Sherlock Holmes and the rabbit that made the magician disappear. And if we turn over here to the, towards the back of the book, there's a story called Sherlock Holmes and the book that caught on fire. Now I've never heard of that before. I don't think that a book can catch on fire. You think a book can catch on Whoa, 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 what happened? Did this book just catch on fire? That's a little scary. Maybe we need to pick another story. Oh, I know which one I want to talk to you today about. And that's my very favorite Sherlock Holmes story. It's called Sherlock Holmes and the Case of the Missing Jewel. So are you all ready? Let's do it. The mysteries are fun to play along with because as you read the story, you can try to help the detective solve the mystery yourself and think, figure out what happened or who you think did something. And if you look at the end of the book, it usually tells you the answer when the detective solves the story. Now, we're going to play along without knowing the ending first. I've got this ending in this envelope here, and I'm going to let you hold that for us so that I can't mess with it or change the ending on it anyway and if we do our jobs as good detectives we will solve this mystery and we'll check our work by opening that envelope at the end. Alright, so the case of Sherlock Holmes and the missing jewel. Now this story happens in a castle where there was a king that had a very, very special crown. And the reason his crown was so special is because of this jewel that was right in the middle of the crown. And it was called the gazillion dollar jewel. And that's because it was worth over a gazillion dollars. It was so important. Because when the king had that jewel on his crown, he felt strong and smart and brave and kind. And so that's why that jewel was worth so much. And the king would wear his crown all day long. As soon as he got up in the morning, he would put it on and he would wear it throughout his day so that he could be strong and smart and brave and kind all day long. But at nighttime, he had to brush his teeth just like you do. And he, his mommy came in and read him a good night story. But he had to take the crown off to sleep. But when he took the crown off, they had to be very careful with a gazillion dollar jewel. And so one of his specially most trusted servants would come in and they would take a cloth like this and they would fold it up into kind of a pouch so that they could put the gazillion dollar jewel down in the pouch. So they would very carefully take it off and they would drop it right in the pouch just like that. And then they would take this pouch and they would put it in the safe so that no one could mess with the jewel. Then the next morning, the king would wake up and he would want to put on his crown. So the servant would go to the safe and open it up and bring out the pouch to get out the gazillion dollar jewel to put it back on the crown. But he, uh-oh, there's something wrong. He reached in the pouch and the jewel was gone. And nobody knew where it went and they could not find it anywhere. So that's when they called me, Sherlock Holmes, the world's greatest detective. And that began the case of the missing jewel. Okay. 
Besides being a great detective, Sherlock Holmes is also a world famous scientist. And so we're going to take a minute and look into Sherlock's science lab and see how he might perform some experiments. Go, this is real science, boys and girls. And I'm using stuff that's very safe to use. Not all chemicals are safe, but what we're using here today is very safe. But if you ever try your own experiment at home, you always need to make sure an adult is with you and knows what you're doing so that you stay safe. Because before I learned how to do these experiments to share with you today, I had to study and I had to make sure that they were safe and that you would be safe watching those experiments. Okay, so we're going to try something kind of fun for our first experiment. I have a tube that has some liquid in it. And what color is that? It's kind of red, isn't it? A little pink red. And if you drank it, it's perfectly safe. And it would actually taste pretty good. It's kind of sweet. Because you know what it is? It's just some juice. It's just some cranberry juice. And I'm just going to pour that juice right in our cup right here. All right, now to make the chemistry start happening, we're going to add some things to our juice. Now this next item that I'm going to bring out here, I need to stir it up just a little bit. It's kind of white. It almost looks like milk, doesn't it? Well, what do you think would happen if you mix a red color and a white color? Now we're going to take a guess. And scientists have a special word for a guess. It's called hypothesis. Say that one more time. It's hypothesis. And what a hypothesis is, is what the scientist thinks will happen. And so they write down their hypothesis and then they do their test to see if they were right. So our hypothesis is that if we add this white and we add the red together, what color do you think we'll make? Well, my hypothesis is pink, because usually if you mix red and white together, you get kind of a pink color. Let's see if we're right. Let's pour the white in, and oh no, that didn't turn pink at all, did it? It's kind of a, almost a brown or kind of an ugly, dirty water color. So that hypothesis was not right, but that's okay because now we'll just try some more. Let's see what happens if we add one more chemical into our mix. Now this chemical kind of looks like water because it's good and clear, but it's not water. It wouldn't hurt you to drink it, but it wouldn't taste very good. It's real sour and kind of stinks a little bit. I don't think I'd want to drink it. But let's see what happens if we pour the clear liquid into our mix here. Whoa, look at that. It released a lot of gas, which made the bubbles come out of our liquid and bubble over onto our plate. Isn't that pretty neat? Okay, so next we're going to try a couple of other experiments. And this time we're going to start off with a dry powder. It almost looks like sugar or salt, if you can see into the tube very well. But I'm just going to pour a little bit of this dry powder into our cup, just like that. And this time, we're going to add just some plain old water to it. This is water. And we're just going to add a little bit of water to our cup and see what happens. If we pour some water in there, and watch what happens. I can just pour that water right over my hand right now and I don't even get wet. You know why? Because if you look very closely, you can see that this powder has turned into kind of a gel, or almost like a pudding. It's become squishy, but it's solid now. It's not just water anymore. It's kind of squishy, almost like jello or pudding or something like that. And I'm going to tell you why that happens. Because you see, those little pieces of that powder were kind of like the ball that Sherlock was playing with. They were small and just sitting there all together. Um, nice and dry. But when they got wet, when I poured the water in the cup, what happened was they grew. They absorbed that water and they grew just like that and became much bigger. And they also got sticky. When they got bigger, they got sticky and they kind of stuck together. And that's what makes this pudding here is because all those molecules of that powder are now stuck together. 
But now not all molecules stick together when they get wet. Sometimes something different happens. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And here I have another powder. This looks like the first one, but it's actually a different chemical. And we're going to pour that right into our cup, just like that. So we've got the dry powder in there. And now I'm going to add a little water to this and let's see what happens. Watch what happens. See how the cup is filling up? Pour just a little bit more water in there maybe. Look at that. The cup is now full. Remember how little bit of powder we had at first? And now look, the cup is all full of the powder. What does that look like? It almost looks like snow, doesn't it? And it feels like snow too, except it's just not cold. And so this one didn't get sticky like the first one did. It absorbed the water just like the first one, but instead of getting sticky, this one actually started pushing each other apart. And that's what made it grow and expand and go from the little bit to filling the whole cup and making a big powder now. So Sherlock Holmes would use science experiments to help him solve mysteries. And now you've seen it, how a couple of science experiments work as well. And there's also some books in the library that have some experiments you could try at home. So that might be a fun project for you and your family to do together. But always remember to be safe and have an adult with you while you're doing those things. Okay, so we've seen how some of our science experiments work. Now I'm going to give you guys a test. It's observation skills. And observation is a big word that just means paying attention and watching closely. And I'm going to do a magic trick this time, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite magic tricks that no one has ever been able to figure out how I do it. And I bet you won't be able to either. But if you use your observation skills really well, you might come up with a guess of how this trick works. And it's really very simple. I have inside this door a picture of a bunny. What color is the bunny? It's black, right? And notice I'm standing beside this plate that's black on this side and I have a white plate on that side. So watch what happens. I have the black bunny by the black plate and all I have to do is walk over to stand by the white plate and the bunny turns white. Isn't that amazing? I mean, nobody has ever figured out how I do that because I can just walk back over here by the black plate and I have a black bunny again and by the white plate and I have a white bunny again. What? You say I'm turning the box around? No, I'm not turning it around. No, I didn't turn it around. I wouldn't do that. That would be a dumb magic trick if all I was doing was turning the box around. You don't believe me? You think I'm really turning the box around? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take the bunny out of the box. And I'll even open up the door so that you can see there's only one bunny in the box. Turn it around. Okay, I'll turn the box around. Oh, you meant turn the bunny around. Okay, we can do that. How about that? The other way? Okay, we'll do it the other way. Oh, you want to turn it all the way around. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn it all the way around. Isn't that good? See, I told you you wouldn't be able to figure out what... Oh, you want to see the other side of this. You think there's a white bunny on the other side. Okay, well, you know what? I'm showing you the bunny's face. But if I turn it around, it might be a little bit embarrassing for the bunny because if I turn it around, you're going to see the bunny's other side. Okay, Sherlock Holmes also liked to do research. He would study books and magazines and even newspapers, and he kept files uh, of information from all of his old cases and other things that might happen in the news because he never knew what might become a useful clue in his next mystery. And so I was going to show you some of these newspaper clippings he found. Um, these are from some old cases. There was a case he did where a helicopter disappeared and all the people in it, but then he found them. So that was the case of the helicopter. There was another case about a road that was closed. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. And then there was another case of the man who sold insurance, but that one was really boring. But then here's some clippings that might help us with our mystery in finding that missing jewel. Look at that, there's a clock on this one. 
Does anybody know what time it is? It says 9.30. So that might be a clue for us. At 9.30, a mysterious package arrived. And so Sherlock opened up the package, and inside the package was a library card. So that gave him an idea. He would go down to the library and look around. Now he was looking for that lost jewel, and jewels are treasures. And so he remembered a famous book called Treasure Island. So he asked the librarian, where is the Treasure Island book? And so when he found it, he looked at it closely, and he noticed there was a fingerprint on the book that meant somebody had touched it really recently. So he opened up the book, and inside the book was a treasure map that he thought might lead him to where the jewel was. And so Sherlock put all those clues together, and when you take all those individual pieces and you put them all together, you wind up getting the whole story. You know the beginning, the middle, the almost middle, and the end of the story. So now it's time for us to find out what the end of our story is. Okay, so Sherlock had the map, but he really still was not sure who the person was that might have taken the jewel. But a lot of times, police and other detectives use what's called a sketch artist. So if you like to draw, you might even want to be a sketch artist someday. And what these people do is they take descriptions from witnesses. If somebody sees somebody doing something, they may describe to that artist what the person looked like or what they were wearing or something about them to help the detective figure out who it was. So I have one of those sketchbooks here, but I'm not very good at drawing, so I kind of have a special sketchbook that already has pictures in it to help me figure out who the person is that we're looking for. But the way this sketchbook works is we can give our person different hair. So like this picture here, the little boy has some red hair. But if I flip it through, we can give him all different kinds of hair. It makes them look like different people, doesn't it? Might have a cap on, might have clown hair just all kinds of different hair that the person might have. On, might have. We can also change the way their eyes and their nose look. We can flip through, give them kind of sleepy eyes like that, or all kinds of different faces. What if they had sunglasses on? Maybe our person had sunglasses on. And then we could also give them different mouth. That guy was smiling, his mouth's open, he looks kind of angry. So maybe this is what our person looked like. Do you think so? Well, I'm not really sure it's this guy, but I need you all to help me guess who our suspect is. And the way we're going to do this is I'm just going to flip all the way back to our beginning picture. And I'm going to go through this time, and I'm going to flip through, and you're going to tell me when to stop, and we'll find out what the hair and the eyes and the mouth look like, what you think they look like. So here we go. I'm just going to start with the hair, and I'm just going to start flipping through, and you tell me to stop. Stop. Okay, right there? All right. Well, look, if we're right, our person had on a funny little hat. Now, if we'd gone another one, he might have had his hat on sideways or something else, but that's the hat that you told me to stop. So let's find out what his eyes might have looked like. Just tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there. All right. And one more thing to do is the mouth. Stop. Wow. Okay. So this is the picture you guys gave me. Remember, you could have given me that one, or you could have even given me... If I can get the card to flip here, you could have given me the sunglasses again, but this is the face you gave me. And we're going to find out now if that matches our answer that was in our envelope at the beginning. So we're going to take the picture out of the envelope. And there's only one picture in the envelope. And I'll let you hold that. And let's look and see do they match? Is the hat the same? The eyes and the mouth, they're all the same. I think we did it, boys and girls. You all helped Sherlock identify who may have taken 
the jewel. Okay, so Sherlock now had a suspect. He knew who may have taken the jewel. And he knew from that picture that that was a little boy named Freddy. And so he went and talked to Freddy, and he found out that Freddy did take the jewel, but he didn't steal it. He wasn't going to keep it. He said, I just wanted to hide it a minute because I wanted the king to learn something. What could a king learn? Well, you know what? All the days that the jewel was missing, the king still wore his crown without it, but he was still strong and smart and brave and kind. Turns out he didn't even need that gazillion dollar jewel. It wasn't the jewel that made him strong and smart and brave and kind. He was that way anyway. Just like you guys can be strong by keeping your body healthy. You can be smart by paying attention at school and reading lots of books and even trying some science experiments. And you can be brave and face up to those things that scare us sometimes. And you could always be kind to each other. Because what the king realized is as long as he was a strong and smart and brave and kind king, that jewel was really always there. And so that is the case of Sherlock Holmes and the missing jewel. Okay, so thank you boys and girls for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful and safe summer, and I hope that each of you stay strong and smart and brave and kind, and I hope that soon we can see each other again and do some magic in person.